In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We should be confident in our God as a loving Father. For the times in which we fail to place our trust and our confidence in our God, we pause and ask him for his mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. O oh, stupid Galatians, who has bewitched you, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified? I want to learn only this from you. Did you receive the Spirit from works of the law or from the faith in which you heard? Are you so stupid? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now extending with are you now ending with the flesh? Did you experience so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Does then the one who supplies the Spirit to you and works mighty deeds among you do so from the works of the law or from the faith in which you heard? The word of the Lord. Blessed be the Lord, O God of Israel. He has come to his people. Blessed be the Lord, O God of Israel. He has come to his people. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, 
Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. <coughs> the door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son for a snake, hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. I want you to imagine just a few years back to your 21st birthday and your parents are telling you, you know, you're an adult now, so we want to get you something that's really important, something that you cannot do without. For your birthday this year, we are going to get you air. air the air in your lungs is your birthday present this year. We would, kind of, we would all kind of look at them like, Seriously? Maybe just this blank stare like, come on, mom, be, be real with me here. But you know, I think that's kind of, you know, the, the air that we breathe is always around us, but do we ever really notice it? It's something we can't do without, and so I think oftentimes we take it for granted. I think that in some way that this is something like what Jesus is telling us today when he says that the Father will give us the Holy Spirit when we ask for it. Because, of course, we know that as God, the Holy Spirit is always everywhere. He is always holding us in existence. We would actually cease to be without the action of the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean for us to receive the Holy Spirit as a gift? or for Jesus as, as God, as the one who secures good things for us, for him to give us that Holy Spirit, when we are, in fact, always surrounded by his presence. Now, I want you to think about this. A marathon runner is able to perform incredible feats of human endurance, and he is able to do that breathing the same air as you and me. It's not because, you know, he's somehow mystically got more oxygen surrounding him <clears throat> than anybody else. No, but someone who has <clears throat> habitually trained themselves to run those long races, those long, arduous, grueling races, <clears throat> they're able to do this primarily, I think, for two reasons. One is that he has trained his body to be more efficient with the air that he breathes, right? So he know, his body knows it's, it's trained to when he gets that breath full of oxygen, it knows exactly what it's got to do. And he puts all of it to work, getting him to where he's going. And the second reason is that when he is running that race, he breathes often, deeply and often. And I think that real, really, when we get down to it, this is exactly the disposition of the saints who run the race toward heaven, who are constantly striving for the good things that God wants to give them, and who never take no for an answer. See, uh, someone who has ardently pursued the Lord for their whole life, someone who has given themselves over to the will of God, 
they begin to learn with with practice, right, with patience and perseverance, they learn what to do with the Holy Spirit that is given to them. They learn to be docile to the promptings of the Holy Spirit so that, you know, you hear, we hear in the, in the scriptures that when St. Joseph received a message in his dreams, it says that the next morning he got up and immediately did what the Lord was asking him to do. It's that kind of promptitude that the Lord is looking for in his saints. But I would say more importantly, the saints asked for greater and deeper things, and they did so more often. The real, the trial of sanctity, the, the mark of sanctity, is exactly what our Lord is laying out for us today in the gospel. The saints are, if you will, if you will expert seekers. They are expert askers of the Lord. <clears throat> they dared to ask him for great things, not small things, but great things, and they did so every single day. That was how they grew slowly in their dependence on the Lord. And the more they grew in that dependence, the more the Holy Spirit was able to fill their lungs and to give them the courage and strength to run that race. This is why this is why St. Paul in the first reading talks about law without grace, fulfilling just, just the, the works of the law, the prescripts of the, the Jewish law, without grace, without faith. It's basically like, it's like pumping your limbs furiously without breathing. If you do that long enough, actually for not very long, you will asphyxiate and die. And that's why for St. Paul this is so important, that's why he's so impatient with the Galatians. He's saying, this is really important. You have to have faith or you will die. St. Mother Teresa, <clears throat> in a letter to her, her missionaries of charity, her sisters, she writes this. She says, how can we go a single day without hearing Jesus say the words, I love you? Our soul needs this as much as our bodies need oxygen. Without it, we will die. We need to hear this from our Lord. We need to let him say to us, I love you, every single day. Every day that we go without letting him love us, we get one step closer to death. But if we want to hear those words from our Lord, if we want to hear him saying, I love you, then we need look no farther than the sacrament we receive today. We stand to place before our God all of our prayers of petition and of need. For Pope Francis, and for all of our bishops and priests, that the Holy Spirit may fill their lungs to preach the words of truth, the words of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our civil and government leaders, those in authority over our country, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit and inspired to pursue the common good over personal interest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are suffering in any hardship, especially great loneliness or physical illness, that they may have the courage to ask that they may receive, and that Jesus may give them the good things that they need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have passed from our community, especially our friends and family members, that they may go to meet the Lord forever in the eternal banquet of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of our Holy Father and for the intentions that we hold in the quiet of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May we always have the courage and the endurance of God to ask, to seek, and to knock for that which lies within the quiet of our hearts. These things we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of... Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. And as a reminder, on Thursday mornings, we have our prayers in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help. Most Holy and Immaculate Virgin and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge and our hope. We come to you today. We thank God for all the graces received through your intercession. Mother of perpetual help, we promise to love you always and to do all we can to lead others to you. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces, the strength to overcome temptation, a perfect love for Jesus Christ and a holy death, so that we will live with you and your Son for all eternity. Let us pray to be open to God's word. Mother of perpetual help, you continually sought the meaning of God's words and actions in your life. As we listen to God's word, may the Holy Spirit enlighten our understanding and give us the courage to put his word into practice in our daily lives. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed and the Almighty has done great things for you. Mother of perpetual help, we call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in time of temptation and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, help us whenever we call on you. Let us not be content with merely pronouncing your name. May our daily lives proclaim that you are our mother and our perpetual help. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Mother of perpetual help, with the greatest confidence we kneel before you. We implore your help in the problems of our daily lives. Trials and sorrows often depress us. Misfortunes and privations bring misery into our lives everywhere we meet the cross. Comforter of the afflicted, beg your son Jesus to strengthen us as we bear our burdens and to free us from our sufferings. Or if it be the will of God, that we should suffer still longer. Help us endure all with love and patience. May we follow the example of your Son, and through him, with him, and in him, commend ourselves to the care of our Heavenly Father. Let us stand out and present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen. Our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and in choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body and help the sick to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all of our deceased and to all the souls of the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for all the graces received through the sacramental life of the Church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pause now to silently thank our Mother of Perpetual Help for all the favors we have received. Please kneel. 
as we pray for the sick, Lord, look upon your servants laboring under bodily weakness, cherish and revive the souls which you have created, so that purified by their sufferings, they may soon find themselves healed by your mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Mother of perpetual help, you have been blessed and favored by God. You became not only the mother of the Redeemer, but the mother of the redeemed as well. We come to you today as your loving children. Watch over us and take care of us. As you held the child Jesus in your loving arms, so take us in your arms. Be a mother ready at every moment to help us. For God, who is mighty, has done great things for you, and his mercy is from age to age on those who love him. Our greatest fear is that in time of temptation, we may fail to call out to you and become lost children. Intercede for us, dear mother, in obtaining pardon for our sins, love for Jesus, final perseverance, and the grace always to call upon you, mother of perpetual help. Let us renew our act of consecration. United with the members of your confraternity here and throughout the world, we consecrate ourselves to your service. We promise to renew this dedication once a month and frequently to receive the sacraments. We beg you to obtain for us the grace to imitate your great servant, St. Alphonsus, in his love for you and your son. Let us stand now and unite with the Christians of all ages in praising Mary and committing ourselves to a powerful protection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, the Holy Mother of God. Let us pray, Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as a mother ready at every moment to help us. Grant we beg you that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. This we ask through you, who live and reign forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. 